Hello, I'm Donald Leggett, and welcome to the London Southeast CEO interview. I'm joined today by Mike Buck, CEO of AIM listed Petromatad, the Mongolian oil and gas explorer and producer. Welcome, Mike. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you very much. Nice to see you again. And thank you very much indeed for yesterday's update. Could you tell us what's caused the delay in the Heron 1 exploitation lances, uh, license being granted? Yeah, well, I guess in a nutshell, the, uh, the delay has been caused by the change of government as a result of the parliamentary elections in, in uh, the late part of the second quarter. Um, we, we, we rushed to try and get everything that we needed to do done before the end of June, um, and uh, we were reasonably well on time. But as we've gone through the third quarter, unfortunately, um, there's been, been a few bureaucratic delays. The committee that needs to review our submission next is being reconstituted. And we had hoped that it would be done before the end of September and that we would meet and have the reserves report approved. But unfortunately, that has not yet happened. However, the good news is that all of the feedback we're getting from the ministry is that that um, committee has been going to be constituted very soon, and that our um, report is high on the agenda, is, a, is an urgent item for the committee when it is reformed, and all of the feedback we're getting is that we can expect an approval. It's just taking a little bit longer than we had hoped. So what does the development of Head of One actually mean for Mongolia? And are you convinced that you're still seeing support from the government? Certainly we are getting support uh, from all the people that we're talking to. We were um, fortunate and honoured to have a meeting with the new minister uh, shortly after he'd taken up his post. Um, and he was very keen that we should progress quickly because the new government, it's the same party that was in power before the parliamentary elections, but obviously there have been a few changes within the, within the structure. The, the, the new government is making great play of the refinery project in Mongolia it's part of their four-year plan. They want the refinery up and running by 2024. And uh, Heron features uh, quite dramatically in that because that's a refinery that's designed for 30,000 barrels a day of feedstock. Currently, Mongolia's production is less than 20,000 barrels a day. So the five to 10,000 barrels a day that um, Heron could contribute to that are obviously quite important. And the government is giving us all indications that that's what they want. They want this field on stream, proven, appraised, tested, and ready to rock and roll as soon as possible. And once the refinery comes on stream, then there's some uh, throughput and some feedstock for the refinery itself. It's useful to mention that the vital detailed environmental impact assessment, a requirement for the exploitation license, has been approved though. And does this give some reassurance that the exploitation license will eventually happen? Uh, yes, it does. Um, this is a document that we had feared was going to take actually a little longer than it did. We started preparations in November, shortly after the discovery, um, and we now have the approval of the Ministry Envir of Environment. The detailed environmental impact assessment is a document that we have to have for the approval of the exploitation license. And it involves a lot of interaction with the local community, which we were able to do. We weren't allowed to have big meetings, but we were able to do effectively family by family meetings to make sure that we got uh, the buy-in of the local government in what we wanted to do. And this um, detailed environmental impact assessment is of a five-year duration and covers the first part of the development of Heron. So we're very glad to have that uh, already approved um, because you need these for every operation that you do in country and sometimes it can be quite um, problematic to get all the pieces in place but we have been able to do that in I wouldn't say record time but we're pleased that we've got that uh, in the bag now. Indeed that sounds very positive. Uh, finally a very quick reminder as to what the next steps are please and how large the head and one discovery actually is. So um, we need to have the um, Petroleum Subcommittee of this um, particular council, the Mineral Resource Professional Council of Mongolia needs to meet to review and approve our reserves report. Once that is done, we need to agree with the regulator, the area of land that we are going to retain. 
And that under law, that is done by mutual agreement. We have already submitted our proposal. We've had some interaction with the government, so far reasonably favorable, so we're not expecting problems there. And then the plan of development has to be submitted through MRPAM to the ministry once again, and a separate subcommittee of the Mineral Resource Professional Council has to review the plan of development. We've been working on the plan of development for the last six months. It's ready to go in as soon as the reserves report is approved. Uh, so we've made all those preparations. And I think it's fair to say that with Heron being the first discovery in Mongolia, commercial discovery in Mongolia for some time, that um, we are a, a little, we've been a little bit hamstrung with a process that hasn't been used for the last, let's say 10 years, but we are going through it. And clearly the government wants this field to provide feedstock for its refinery once it's up and running. And the government is making a big play of that. So we are uh, getting a lot of face time with the people that we need to see. And we've just suffered a few bureaucratic delays in the last few months. But uh, other than that, I don't think there are anything to worry about. I think, as I've said all along, it, it's a matter of when, not if. Mike Buck, thank you very much indeed for that operational update. Thank you.